in this series, we'll be making a horror game from the ground up and teaching you everything along the way. From researching, theorizing, and prototyping, to main menus, UI, and sound. Join me and follow along to become the master game developer you want to be. Hello everybody and welcome back to creating a horror game from scratch. Now, the last few episodes, we've really been on getting the evidence down. We got the AI going and we got the AI to do a certain amount of evidence. Well, because we've been spending so much time doing that, I figure we need to switch things up so that way you guys keep learning and keep experiencing new things and we don't just focus on one type of coding for an extended period of time. That being said, I do think that We'll return to the evidence, but for now, we're going to shift gears and we're going to do a little bit of UI. So right now, if we hit play and we walk up to something, like for example, if we were to walk up to this screen right here, it doesn't prompt the player what to do. So we know we can left click and we'll get the camera to pop up and we know that we can right click to get out. So we're gonna add a prompt so that whenever someone approaches, it will say, use your left mouse button. And whenever they're in here, well, it'll say, use your right mouse button to get out. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna hit control space to open up our content browser and we're gonna go over to our blueprints folder and I'm going to create a new folder and we're gonna call this UI. Remember that interfaces is a separate thing from UI. Interfaces is between blueprints, whereas UI is the user heads up display. So when we're in the user folder, let's go ahead and right click and we're gonna go over to the user interface and we're gonna create a widget blueprint. Um, go ahead and just click the one common that says user widget and we'll go ahead and name this tooltip underscore UI. And we'll go ahead and open that up. UI, just like many other blueprints, is pretty similar. You got the details on the right, and we got our little thing over here with all the um, categories and things like that. The first thing we're going to do is, in the, um, in the search palette, we're gonna type in um, canvas, and we're gonna get a canvas panel. This makes it so, um, we can create it somewhere on the screen. That way it's like always in that spot. You can create individual UI elements and then have them placed uh, in different locations. Kind of like an inventory in an MMORPG. You might move the inventory over here, then close it. And what you would do is create an independent widget that's specifically for the inventory. However, we're just gonna have a nice static UI so we can use canvas panels. After the canvas panel, we're gonna add in some text. We're gonna drag that to about the bottom middle. We're going to what to set the anchors to the bottom middle as well. You can either do the middle or the bottom middle. I think I'm going to do the bottom middle in this case, uh, which is over here. We can just drop, uh, do this drop down menu. I'm gonna click the bottom middle and there's our anchor. I'm going to text align to the middle. So that way if it grows, it stays right here in the middle. Do not size to content. So it might seem logical to, and I'll show you why it would seem logical to. If I put a ton of text in here, see how the block is tiny, but the text is huge. So you're like, oh, I'll size the content, but watch what happens. Boop, it grows to the right. Now I'm sure there's a way to get it to not grow to the right, especially considering our justification is center, uh, but I don't know what it is off the top of my head. So I just don't size the content and it will always be right where we want it. So how I tell if this is centered, by the way, is with it selected, if I hover my mouse on the top middle anchor, you can see the centering there. So if I just click and then use the arrow keys, see that I can get it right center, which appears to be 72. And because I like nice solid numbers, I'm gonna get rid of this decimal and just change this to like negative 190, something like that. Now I'm gonna get rid of all this text here and I'm just gonna do underscore PH for placeholder. It doesn't really matter what you put there. You can literally put anything cause it's not going to be present after we set up the UI. And one last thing before we go over to the graph is I didn't name anything, which is a big no, no canvas panel can stay that. However, text, let's just go ahead and uh, name this tooltip underscore text, something like that. And now what we'll do is we'll go over here to text and where it says bind, go ahead and put a drop down menu and hit create binding. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to call this function anytime we need to update the text. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and call uh, rename this to just update tooltip. And then we're going to create a variable and we're going to call it tooltip text. Oh, it was already taken because we already named something that. Uh, just call it tooltip. Good enough. And we'll change the uh, variable type over to some text. And we'll plug the tooltip in to the return node. So what this is going to do is anytime we call or update this variable, it will automatically update the text here in the tooltip UI, which by default, if you look, uh, is nothing. It's empty. So you don't have to worry about placeholders showing up because the default variable value is empty. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make it so anytime we are looking at something interactable, we will see the tooltip pop up to notify the player that they can indeed use the left mouse button to interact. To do this, we're actually going to go over to our content uh, first person blueprints and open up the BP first person character. Luckily, we have a bunch of code that already does line traces. So. Right now, the line trace, if you remember correctly, is set up to whenever we left click, it does the line trace at that moment. So we're going to do a separate line trace that uh, checks to see if we need to pop up a tooltip. Let me give you an example of why we're taking such an extreme route to do it instead of simply if they're close enough. If the player was standing here and looking to the left, it would say use left mouse button. And as you can see, it doesn't do anything if I click and that's because we are already drawing a line whenever we left click. So in order to be consistent, we are going to do a line trace in order to see if the tooltip even needs to show up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to edit and we're going to go to project settings. Within the project settings on the left hand side, you'll see that we have something entitled input. Go ahead and click on input. We have jump, we have primary action, we have cancel, and we have debug. However, what we need to add is two more. Go ahead and click add uh, twice. We can close these two, so it's only the two new ones here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna name both of these. I lied, I forgot you can have multiple inputs for one of these. So go ahead and delete the second one by hitting this little trash can right here. Boop. We only need the new action mapping, just one. We're going to call this mouse movement. Go ahead and hit the drop down menu. And what you're going to do is you're going to type in mouse and you want mouse X. Then on the right hand side of mouse movement, click the plus button. And then we also need, oh, one sec. Don't, don't, not love mouse button. We need mouse y so mouse movement both mouse x and y anytime we move the mouse we're going to draw a line and check and see if we're looking at something that has the interact interface so we can put the tooltip on the screen so luckily most of this code is already done for us what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to type in custom event and we're going to do tooltip line trace like that let me zoom in i can't see what i'm doing here Oh, yep, see my T is not even capitalized. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab all this code. The only thing I didn't grab is the interact message at the end, as well as the function at the beginning. Copy that and paste it, and you'll get something that looks something like this. We'll go ahead and plug that in, pull this up so it's nice and straight. Zoom in here so I can see what I'm doing. Perfect. So what we need to do is finish off the code so the tooltip shows up and we need to make it so when we move the mouse, it calls the tooltip line trace. To do that, we're gonna type in mouse movement and we'll get the input that we just set up. And anytime it is pressed, even though you're moving the mouse, we are going to do a tooltip line trace. And we will go ahead and compile and save that. I'm going to comment this and just say uh, tooltip line trace call. And then what we'll do is we'll come down here. I never commented the first one, which is really bad of me. We're going to do interact key uh, line trace. 
and then we'll do another one and we're gonna do a tooltip line trace. Now we need to switch which blueprint we're in. We actually need to go to, where is it? I forget what I called it, Ghost Game System. So just so you know, I've updated my naming convention for this. I actually just call it The Brain because I think The Brain works because it controls your level flow. It's going to put all the UI on the screen for us. Basically, all the global variables and stuff are going to be within The Brain. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and change what this is called really quick. Uh, and I think that it's a lot better than just calling it Ghost Game. We're gonna call this brain underscore bp like that and let's open it up first thing i see is something we did whenever i was still a little bit newer to game dev let's go ahead and make a custom event for this this was retrieve spawn locations i don't like to put this much code on the event begin play even though technically we're going to add a lot more code to the event begin play, it's a lot cleaner and nicer to put these on their own functions and then just call the functions so it's a lot easier to look at and understand what's happening. So get spawn locations at the beginning of a level. Oh, I misspelled that. Let's go ahead and change it. And then out of event begin play, we're going to retrieve the spawn locations. It's just a lot cleaner and like you'll be able to follow this way easier than being like what's this doing and then what's that doing all right so anyway we were putting the tooltip ui on the screen so what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom event and call it initialize i hope i spelled that right i probably didn't uh initialize tooltip ui and so i'm running off of a side screen by the way that's why if it seems like i can't see right now initialize there we go tooltip ui it's because this screen's a lot smaller than the one i'm used to which i will fix but for right now it's what i have to deal with so we're going to initialize the tooltip ui and the only way that you can do this is to pull out and type in create widget now a widget is pretty much anything that goes on the screen a health bar a stamina bar a picture an inventory screen a shop anything that goes on the screen that's not actively in the game world is probably going to be a ui element which is known as a widget uh, the class is going to be the tooltip ui that we created now here's the thing about widgets they don't immediately go on the screen you have to tell them to go there you can create them but that doesn't mean they're on the screen um, but before we tell them that, let's go ahead and make it a variable. We're gonna promote it to variable. And on the left here, hand side here, we're gonna say tool tip UI ref. Now, the reason we're gonna do that is because we have a variable in there that we need access to. So by creating it a variable in the brain, uh, we can simply just access the t anything that needs to access the UI, we'll just access the brain, and then they have access to the UI. So we made a variable, so let's go ahead and put it on the screen. That is simply doing add to viewport, just like that. Initialize, initialize, initialize tool, tool tip UI. Don't judge me, listen, you're learning from me. Think about that. Anyway, <laughs> after we retrieve the spawn locations, we will initialize the tool tip UI and we will compile and save. And this is also one of the glorious things about having a brain BP is you don't have to put the brain BP in anything that's going to have a main menu. Because if you think about it, if we were to take our character and our current setup and make a main menu, they're gonna be able to walk around and stuff because that's just how our character is set up. The UI would pop up and everything and it wouldn't look very good. So by putting all that kind of stuff within a brain, we just don't drop the brain in a main menu and then it won't pop up. Anyways, now we are initializing it and adding it to the screen uh, and it's in the brain. So I imagine the first person character is already retrieving the brain. As a matter of fact, I don't think we ever made the first person character retrieve the brain. So we're gonna have to do that. Within your first person character BP, we're gonna create a custom event. We're gonna go ahead and get get brain ref. I'm gonna pull out of there and we're gonna get all actors of class. We're gonna get brain. And remember, we know there's only one, so we can simply just type in get 
a copy, leave it at zero because that's the first one on the list, promote it to a variable, change the name to brain ref, go ahead and comment this, get the brain ref, and then since we don't have an event begin play at the top here, I'm going to pull out and say get brain ref, and that will play or get immediately whenever the game starts. We'll go ahead and compile and save. Perfect. So now the UI is on the screen and we have access to that variable. So right now, if you remember, whenever we move the mouse, it is going to get the first person camera. It's going to go forward 225 uh, points or units. Uh, and if it hits something, what it's going to do is check and see does it have the interact interface? If it does, then what we're going to do is get the brain ref and um, oh, I, we can delete this extra pin here. Uh, we're gonna get the brain ref like this, which means we're going to have access to the UI. So get tooltip UI ref. Then we'll pull out and hit set tooltip and you want this one with the pink thing next to it because that is our variable. We will plug this in and the tooltip will be press left mouse button like that. I like to actually use an image of a mouse instead of using the text, but for right now we'll use the text. Uh, and then, do, 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 do. So this is, this is checking if it hit something. If it doesn't hit something, we are going to actually just copy this, paste it down here, make this a little bigger. We're going to plug this in. If it doesn't hit anything, and we're gonna clear the tooltip text like that. So I'm gonna hit compile and save. And now whenever we walk up to the screen, it should say press left mouse button. It did not. Uh-oh. Brief intermission. I just wanted to let you know that I have a Patreon down below. It helps support me to make these videos. If you're enjoying them and want me to be able to keep doing these, please consider supporting my Patreon. Let's get back to it. It has been, I don't know, 30, 30, 45 minutes. I got coffee now. I've been, been debugging. This is how easy it is for you to miss something simple. I did it. Compile, save, <laughs> make sure yours is plugged in. As you can see, I've got everything all wired together to figure out what was going on. Um, I don't think I've done anything besides that for you guys to change. And there it is. It's not there, it's there. It's not there, it's there. Oh my gosh. It was so simple. Ah, oh well, I found it. Here it is. My Patreon link is below if you guys enjoyed this, but this is it for me, guys. I hope you learned a little something about widgets and UI and how easily your, go your code can be bugged and how simple of a solution it can be, but throw you for a loop. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next episode.